to Sanford? It, it's lots of little bits, really. We're just trying to extinguish the bits that you were obviously Wells. You know, but we're not trying to pretend. You it's know, very picturesque. Yeah, isn't it's, it? it's got a lot going for it already. So, you know, you're just trying to enhance it. Here we are at Doyle's Grocers. This is a shop that was empty, derelict, next door to one of our main locations, the Swan Hotel. So we've very simply made it into a grocer's. Many people have been coming in to buy their pounds of uh, pears every morning and, and a bit slightly disappointed, but it's not really. So that's been fun. They're plastic. Some of them are real, some of them are plastic. Mm. The flowers are all the artificial um, art flowers, mostly the art flowers in the village because we wanted to make sure that it was summer. Hanging baskets that, that, that kill, kills a Billy White Law. Action! Go there! There's an awful lot of referencing there, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, that's the We way try that... and make our visual metaphors a lot more subtle, and therefore you'll have to search for them throughout the film. We don't want to give away too many clues. Quiet, please. Because there might be some somewhere by chance, yeah, won't I was transported to the war room in Doctor Strangelove. Yeah. Is that... That was, yeah, that was a definite reference of this. The very shiny, polished surface, the very uniform selection of chairs, the big sort of screen where everybody's watching, absolutely. Ken Adam would have been proud. Bless him. Battleship Potemkin. <laughs> That's the bit down the stairs. <laughs> Were there any stairs anywhere? I'm not sure. We've got to try and say something incredible now. But, well, right at the beginning, I was given a list of names by Edgar, which are all kind of relevant to old cop and police films and TV shows, and I could kind of pick and choose lots of names to use from that. We're talking street names and signage in Sanford. Oh, yeah? Callahan and Riggs. Callahan Park from Harry Callahan. Norris Hill, Chuck Norris. There's... Oh, gosh. Riggs is from Lethal Weapon. Um, Walter Hill is from Walter Hill. Murtag Estate Wine. Yun Fat, that's a Chinese takeaway that appears in the Sanford Citizen quite frequently. The recovery vehicles, total breakdown, they're called. So basically, this table needs to be changed to a smaller one. It's much nicer to act in a real environment than it is to, you know, to kind of be pl play acting all the time. I mean, you, you, do, you can do that. and. It, it, it's harder and it requires a you know a little bit more imagination. But you know when there's a physicality around you and there's the actual thing is there. That's that's a thought process that you you can you can leave to the surroundings. You know you don't have to keep remembering where you are. You are there, and it's great. You know the sets and the physical props, the physical costumes, and you know was were, were great in this film. Oh dogs, oh, get in here. Roar, roar. Look, I can't believe it's not Buddha. <laughs> I'm having a bowl of soup in oh, the 70s. Oh, oh, flasks. Ah, Wayne Rooney. <sighs> oh, I've lost my marbles. <laughs> um, what, what the time is it? Oh, what time is it, Nick? Oh, come on, big watch. Uh, <laughs> it's huge. Uh, oh, cheers, I'm smaller than I look. There's something in that as well. Whoa! I've dropped my nan's ashes. Um, <laughs> what do you think of the show so far? L N E D S. Is it better with or without? Uh, action! <laughs> That's it. Well, you've got to stand a little bit close together so I can okay. get you both in. There we go, the proud parents. Are you proud of your son? Yes. Yes. Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them, actually. <laughs> Action's been a staple diet for as long as I can remember. Both he and Simon are big action fans, so did, I, I know that they just wanted to do a very English action movie. And I, I helped draw the boards, so I know what's coming, and I really want to see it on the screen. <laughs> And you're on the model for this, so you kind of like turn around and go, let's go past the sun. He told me he wanted to be a director when he was six. I taught him drama right through the school with his friend Graham, who's also in this. I don't know that I taught him very much because he was so creative and he just went off in a corner with Graham and did their own thing. You know, we were at school, we were, um, wrote the scripts and uh, 
I was in them and it was just fun. We sort of, schoolwork went out the window. He wanted to be a film star. And so we took him to see a film shoot to see what was entailed when he was six. When he came off set, I said, um, well, do you still want to be a film star? He said, no, I want to be the director. Straight away, get a key roll, let's do one more. Hey, did he say you want me to do the line? No, just don't say sorry at the end. Oh. Say the sort of, like, come on, it might be fun, and then right. both look out. OK, so Here we're we rolling. We were on Sean and the the uh, zombie twins from it. And action. You know how people will recognise okay. you from Sean is if you oh, well, uh, well, well, bow your head well, a well, tiny well, bit well, and well, give well, us well, that well, look. Yeah, and your eyes are well. Yes. Yeah. There Thank you go. You it's our much. trademark. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. Well, there's this sort of tradition going now for Edgar and I, and, and, and what we do is uh, we seem to be casting each other in our films. It's like the opposite of the Hitchcock thing. Rather than ourselves being in it, we put each other in it. And uh, like I was a zombie in Shaun of the Dead with Nick, my producer, and then he was a, a sort of a spiritual technician in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And now I'm a crackhead in Hot Fuzz. And yeah. that's basically it. That's wicked. I'll give you everything I've got for that two seconds. It's gonna I'm going to get on cinematic gold. Drop the weapon! My belt fell off! <laughs> just, just like being 11 again. You just get to dress up and and pop up. Yeah, well, you're going to have to get used to it. You just get to dress up and, and put on costumes and run around. I get to hold a rifle later. I don't think I've held a rifle since I was in the army cadet, so it's very exciting. Uh, it's great. Well, We're the Beastie Boys. Like the, uh, I'll be Run. I'll be Adam Yoach. I'll be Easy E. So, so I'm really privileged. Shaun of the Dead, I didn't have a line. I was just on screen for a second. Now I'm on screen for a second with a line. By Edgar's eighth film, I might say more than one word. OK. All right. That's not very good, is it? No, no that's no, too no. high. All right. Whenever I direct anything, I'm really envious of people who aren't involved because they just seem to stand around and chat and giggle all the time, right, Oscar? That your face. And I always think, man, I'd rather be chatting and giggling. I don't want to direct this. But then actually, you know, the grass isn't that much greener. It's quite boring. OK, really? It's just going again. Can you yeah. give me any... That's not good. Is that not good? All right. Hmm, I wouldn't do Hello. it like that. What's wrong with that? that? <laughs> <laughs> Did you drink that bottle of mess with for you? Peter Jackson uh, played Santa Claus and stabs me through the hand. I'll tell you what, uh, Peter's, Peter's really let himself go after Carl. It's, uh, it's, it's shocking. It is. It is. I tried to get myself together for a while, but failed. I had central issues when I was a child. It was a way of finally ridding myself of all my central problems. Every time I see Santa, I want to stab him. My parents were very worried about me. They sent me to a center abuse clinic, but Simon allowed me to stab him, and that rescued me. He threw himself into it with great gusto. In fact, it was hurting uh, after the, the third take because my hand was being pushed with what was a fake retractable knife, but there were little points. Hold it with the other hand as well, then you can just be yeah, it's totally in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Action. But um, I just couldn't bring myself to complain because it was Peter Jackson. <laughs> and even though he would have been like mortified if he'd known that I was in a, the slightest bit of pain, it was just like I've got to um, to go through with this. It's it's the Lord of the Rings himself. So, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause, yeah. please, for Peter Jackson. Yeah. In and out, like right that. How did you prepare for the role? Oh, yes. I had Simon's picture on my wall and stabbed it and slashed it, burnt it over and over again for months. And, and then... We had lots of toys kind of on the camera department this time, which was really fun. I've never seen so many different camera rigs. Like not just the steady cam. Action top! But then the steady cam on a Segway. Morning, brother. Morning, 
No, first time ever used on a British picture. This? Really? Yeah. You know, the, 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 the rickshaw. The overhead hanging camp. Daddy! Daddy! Oh, God! Hold on, Daddy! Just hold on! Hold on, it's gonna be fine! Double exposures and hang cranking, which was really fun. Just the other day had a rhythm where he was going from like about 18 frames to anywhere to 32, 34, and he was coming down and up, and it, it's just really getting a rhythm. Do you know? It's surprisingly difficult to count numbers out loud when they appear in front of you that quickly. You wouldn't think it. And why are you doing it? Those are the speeds that the camera was running at in frames per second. They change faster than you can say them. So you're just saying some of them. Oh, my head. <laughs> and multiple cameras. And so that, that was a, 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 new, a new experience, which was really fun. And action! If you're working in a particular genre, you definitely come out of each shoot with even more respect for the people who make those films. I come out of like Hot Fuzz with a lot of respect for people like Michael Bay and Tony Scott, or people who can marshal those enormous kind of action scenes, or like Robert Rodriguez or Michael Mann. And you know, actually making those things is really difficult, and the choreography of it, and you know, and, and keeping the moment and um, those guys make those things look easy, and they're not easy at all. <laughs> and he's employing all of these, you know, like just just willy nilly, and, and but also with great accuracy and effect. And back! Yeah, no, it is fun when you look down the monitor and suddenly you're, you're transported into the world of the film. And there's one shot of Stuart Wilson walking through the square with a shotgun. And it was a really cool shot, low angle shot of him with a shotgun. And the camera's going back with him. And I'm watching it. Oh, this is great. There's somebody in shot. Oh, shit. Oh, it's me. <laughs> uh, hopefully, we're going to blow the shit out of this place. What are they, Mike? They're, they're air, air mortars. They're just flying here. The switch has got a valve on it, which dumps the air all in one go. Three, two, one, action! Yeah. <laughs> 
the writing process of the film was was fun because we did a lot of research, talking to policemen from the city and policemen from the country and policemen from the city who transferred to the country in the same way that Simon's character did. And the police, you know, 100% were really, really helpful. What, what made you want to be a policeman officer? Sorry, what made you want to be a policeman officer? Me and Edgar and Simon went for a beer one night in London with a few CID policemen. And, uh, and then I went and spent two days with the Somerset lot. Couldn't be more different. Go to Somerset and it's just, there's no crime. Well, he was telling a story of uh, a, a low-speed tractor chase. A heroin addict nicked a tractor. He was just driving it around and he just fell asleep at the wheel and that was it. That was the end of the, <laughs> of the chase. That is Sergeant Tony Fisher. I went and joined um, the Vietnamese police. And this is one Doris Thatcher. I joined officially for about six months and uh, I got quickly promoted. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, you great big knocker. <laughs> I was just on pagoda patrol. I just um, patrol around uh, pagodas, uh, making sure uh, people weren't dropping litter to face them in any kind of way. And actually, as far as the role of Tony Fisher is concerned, none of that was relevant or useful in any kind of way. So it was a waste of the film company's money and three months of my life. But, you know, I've got a young bride now, and uh, that at least has uh, made it worthwhile. It's interesting playing a policeman because I've got a lot of sympathy and a lot of respect because you just sort of think of you know, hours and hours and hours wearing a really itchy jumper. Sometimes between shots, Simon and I would wander off down to Smith's wearing our uniforms. And people know that you're, you're shooting, but they don't know... You know, they think you're a copper. It's a great feeling. It's weird putting on the police uniform you feel different. When you walk down the street, you feel uh, odd because you know how people might be regarding you, you know. know who is. Eve Draper! Oh, what a pair! <laughs> yeah, they'd come up and ask you where the bishop's eye was or where the cathedral was, and rather than saying, Oh, I'm actually not a policeman. Which then takes explaining. It was easier to say, yeah, well, if you just walk across the town, if the market square and the, the information bureau is on your right. Thank you, officer. Rolling. But he starts off, he's like an android. He is like the T-1000. That's why I was running like that. Because that's the T-1000 run. But for Simon, the big thing was getting fit for the part, which he left to the very last minute because he did all his own stunts and he did a lot of running because they'd been writing for two years. They'd just been sitting on their asses eating cakes. You're one of the few returnees from Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, three years ago, wasn't it? Um, and, uh, yeah, I've, I sort of stopped eating since then. <laughs> it's a tash, it's very, that's all it is, yeah. That's my dietary tech, just grow a tash, man, it does wonders. Well, let's just say we shan't be short of Chunky Monkey for the next few weeks. <laughs> as far as I can make out is, is kind of what it's like. Even down to the, you know, the cake and the, the ice cream and things like that. If there's a, a procedural mishap, you, you pay with the patisserie. <laughs> some hot fuzz and this is hot fuzz 2 back on the streets last time <laughs> i was here with a camera i was under heavy fire i think in the same way that crouch end crept into the script of Shaun of the dead without us ever stipulating that it was crouch end uh we infused the script with wells which is where edgar grew up obviously there were elements of gloucestershire and where i grew up in there but when we started to kind of construct the town architecturally with the town square and the fountain it, it, it just had everything that Wells had. So we actually spent quite a while looking for Sanford. After visiting over 50 towns and villages in the southwest, we came back here. We spent hundreds of thousands of rounds trying to fire guns at old people. What, what a dream. We're coming up to the town hall now. Uh, 
It was a lot more fun. As much as I'm enjoying this, Dan, <laughs> before, when we were clutching a couple of Winchesters mm. and running true. towards a gun battle with the notorious true, yeah. Greg and Sherry. In typical, it's, it started to rain. Hot in typical fuzz fashion, it started to rain. <laughs> I'm going to go and buy an umbrella. And this is also where Stuart shot me in the face, <laughs> which was good. We did it in two bits. We did the London bits first, which took, I think, five or six weeks, and then we transferred down to Somerset. A lot of people really f fell for it, you know, as a place, because it has a, uh, you know, it's kind of mystical shit, but it has that kind of, it, it does have a weird vibe to it, you know. Just after we did the open audition, we went down and did this big town hall meeting. Um, and we invited everyone and we explained exactly what we were going to do. Uh, we've got ex-Bond Timothy Dalton, we've got Billy Whitelaw, Edward Woodward. Um, who was in The Wickerman. The Equalizer himself. The Equalizer himself. <laughs> himself. Uh, also, um, what, who else can I mention? Bill Bailey. Bill Bailey. Who's um, another? You can see, you probably can add the West Country Mafia. Uh, How did the locals react to all this stuff going on while it was going on? I think they were pretty uh, amused and bemused in equal measure. I think probably they'd never seen anything like it. Shot here with quite so many um, guns and, and aspects like that. I'm worried about stonemasonry on our national memorial over here. <laughs> yeah. I love the West Country, I love this whole area, and I always have. And as an actor, I've been here many times in uh, playing in Bristol and Bath, and always come down to Wells, the cathedral, and uh, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely town. It's been very useful for me being able to walk around the cathedral in my clerical dress, because um, I'm also making a bit of money from American tourists on the side, giving them tours. This is the Bishop's Palace, which is, um, which is where the Bishop of Bath and Wells lives, of course. And... Um, we renamed it Sanford Castle, and we shot here um, for about six nights, probably the toughest part of the shoot. And we were sort of uh, filming just over in here in the, uh, in the garden here. And yeah, this is where we shot the castle scene with the NWA. We had the big sort of table here, which we brought in, and we had uh, all of our fine actors around the table. It was also the night that Mr. Peter Jackson came to uh, join us. <laughs> <laughs> Not so scary in, in the daylight, is it? At no point in the film will you ever see this, which is Wells Cathedral, because it was painted out of all the uh, of all the shots that appeared in, because we wanted the church to be the centre of the village, and of course a cathedral makes a town into a city. I thought that for how disruptive we were, and we were pretty disruptive in only in that shops were closed and you know it's a small place and we took over their hotels and we were in their pubs and you know we we were there in their faces i think they were incredibly welcoming actually thank you very much everybody thank you very much much appreciated simon yes point out to us where some of the things are in wells stroke sanford square okay first of all the fountain uh Annette Roper's newsagent upper window, where upon where she shoots us from. Swan Hotel. Over here we have the Crown, where Danny and Nick go to the uh, pub. This bit out here where the police kind of uh, parking bay is, to quickly get that before it goes. That's where Angel and Danny sit and talk about kind of passers-by. If you did look behind you, you'd see Summerfield and the high street which Angel walked up on on his beautiful steed, whose name was Graham. <laughs> It's incredibly busy here. It's a wonder that we managed to make the film at all. <laughs> it's very surreal for me because, like, as with everything that I've ever made, I, I never have a chance to savour it whilst it's actually happening. It was like the weirdest thing of throwing an amazing party which you could not attend because I'm back in my hometown. There's, like, all of my favourite actors there, the whole crew, they're all having a great time, going out to the pub and different restaurants and every night, and I did... I went out once or twice. That was a quite surreal for me, hearing other people sort of saying, oh yeah, we went to the full moon last night. 
That was really nice. Oh yeah, we were in the Crown last night. And so that was strange, because these are all the pubs that I grew up in. We're at Summerfield. We're at Summerfield supermarket. Summerfield in Wales, which uh, was not only a location for hot buns, but also um, I used to work here. I've uh, scoured every square inch of this uh, car park, picking up nappies. So, you know, I'd collect all the trolleys and put them into that kind of little trolley park there. Sometimes, if it was a good day, I'd get up to 20 trolleys going at once. Wow. Well, here it was. Here was uh, St Cuthbert's Church. St Cuthbert's, home of the fate. This is the village fate. If you pan over that way, then you'll see where the tombola was, that, where I announced the winners of the raffle just before Tim Messenger was splatted to death. Come in, Tim, your number's up! <laughs> <laughs> we did some sort of filming right at the top of kind of like 200 foot up. How far is that, 200 foot? Yes, yeah, it's, I well, say so. More? No, I'd say it's 200 feet. It's probably not as high as you'd think it would. Oh dear. Sorry, I'm just a height man. I'm a figures man. Because this is such a, an amazing church, a lot of tourists come to Wales and assume that this is a cathedral, and you get some tourists coming to Wales seeing this and then going away again. <laughs> well, I think it's nice to put some Cuthbert's on the map. The cathedral, you know, gets a lot of heat, and it's time some Cuthbert's gets put on the map. Absolutely. With a great big gory murder. <laughs> This is where this is where Tim Messenger got splattered. The shot where you see kind of um, Tim Messenger with the kind of stone embedded in his head. Our stunt coordinator was wearing this helmet, but he had his he was wearing it like that because to make the neck thinner, he had his he was sort of had his head turned to the side, which is fine. Well, it's not fine because he had it on for two hours. But on top of that, he had to do a fall. He falls flat on his face, which is actually probably one of the most dangerous stunts in the film. Weirdly. To do a fall blinded where your neck is in danger, it was a really, really surprisingly kind of difficult stunt to do. Actually, the cemetery where we laid flowers at Danny's mum's grave, but all the gravestones were fake. There's a few graves, but it's not as, uh, as Night of the Living Dead as it is in the film. No, it's just over there. Just there. And Nick ran off down there, one of the greatest comedy exits in cinema history, I believe, <laughs> in his little cowboy hat. You don't know how to switch off, mate! <laughs> Skipping through the slippery pavement. That was the first time I'd ever worn cowboy boots as well, and I think you can, <laughs> I think you can see that in the way I'm running. I don't think I ever did it, saw you do that without laughing. Oh, yay! Oh, yay! Oh, yay! Tonight, from 7 o'clock, Wells Cinema is transposed as the Sanford Miniplex. Join us at the cinema from 7 o'clock to see all the stars of Hot Fuzz and to make tonight a very special night in the history of our fine city. God save the Queen. I was very excited by the police sirens there. That's probably one of the uh, most exciting experiences of my life. It was great. <laughs> what is, I think sort of, uh, I think Wells has outdone Leicester Square. Hey, brilliant. Again. Hi, Hello. 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 <laughs> 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 It is true. I did sack Edgar when he was next door working for me. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so glad I did because at the end of the day, we can see where his talent lies. Yeah. You'll see it in the next two hours. Talk. <laughs> Coming. I mean, um, this is a you know a special night for me because it represents a bit of a homecoming. It felt so welcome, and your patience was just uh, stunning at times when we were running around blowing things up at seven in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> we take our hats off to you. Thank you very much for letting us film here, and I really hope you enjoy it. That no, said it all, really. Uh, you've got a wonderful city, and it was great to shoot here for five or six weeks, and uh, you know we all fell in love with it. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You are a 
about to watch excitement, action, adventure. You're about to watch one of the best movies I told you earlier in the last 10 years. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Sanford premiere of Hot Fuzz. <laughs> to number 14, Answerer's Place. This is where we, um, when we were writing the film, we started off writing it in London in our office. And, um, and basically there was a lot, too many distractions in London. And you know, it's, it's difficult writing with uh, the internet and cell phones and Ponzi Blackberries like the stupid media types we are, <laughs> um, going off uh, at regular intervals. And so eventually when we were writing Hot Fuzz, we said we have to get into the country and get out of London and uh, switch our phones off and switch the internet off. And that's exactly what we did. We came to this little flat in Wells, which the marketplace is just down there. Oh, Dad. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. See what I mean? This is the flip chart that we did for Hot Fuzz. And we haven't actually seen this uh, since we kind of like wrote it. and. Um, as you'll see, there's just an enormous amount of information. I think when we started this kind of, um, one of the first things we did was pulled a lot of ideas of things that we wanted to do and things about kind of the, the you know, where we grew up and kind of what we wanted to do plot-wise with the film. And so, you know, there's just a, uh, I think it's, it's interesting that the first page is basically going through the murders. <laughs> like how many different... We were straight in there. Straight in there, the first thing is, Crime, witnessed by Angel, accident, fatal accident, unseen by Angel, disappearance, woman, hoodie, accident to Angel, witnesses, cops laugh it off, going straight through the cliches immediately. Nick is pariah, sense of doom. Nick has realisation about killers, decides against telling Danny, attempt on his life, goes to Frank, Angel goes it alone, uncovers cult at midnight, Angel's presumed dead, Danny lets him go, Angel returns, Thanks. avenging Angel. See, it was all kind of... Uh, That's the last half hour right there. Quite <laughs> And then I think it was into, there you go, Sanford. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to figure out all the right, you know, all the various prof professions of the village. Um, trolley factory, that never... There's quite a few things here. Yeah, the, the, the Chinese chip shop, that didn't make it in either. Oh, yeah, we had an idea that they would also be fairly uh, sort of xenophobic and they wouldn't be, you know, they'd, they'd get rid of a Chinese chip shop because it wasn't in keeping with... Uh, yeah, chip, chips in man, mandarin oil, not That's good. It, yeah. <laughs> That's it, So the, the Chinese family running the chip shop were kind of like thrown out on their ear. Well, Sanford, more stuff, approximately 5,000 population. This is, look at the, jeez, oh we procrastinated God. a lot. <laughs> no, it's good. We just tried to kind of like, I suppose it was like having our own version of Sim City. We tried to create our own little world. The Rose and Crush. I just want to ask this, Jets Barber's porn. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I think that's because the gents' barbers that I used to go to was where he always used to have like a little um, oh, yeah, selection yeah. of porn and sort of like naughty calendars. Oh yeah, here we go. Angel flees to London, stops at services. High noon moment, goes back alone. And that would be like the thing of like, you know, Gary Cooper going out of town and going, I've never run from anything in my life. <laughs> so I like the idea of like Simon's character doing that in Heston services. <laughs> I like this. Whoa. This is funny. Epilogue. Nicholas is the sheriff of Sanford. Ambiguous fascist nod. <laughs> and I thought that was funny that at the end of the film, I like the idea that Nicholas Angel, after being the most liberal cop, in the last scene he's got black gloves on, a leather bomber jacket, you know, sort of, uh, oh, you yeah. know, sunglasses. He's turned into the fascist Avenger. Exactly. It's like he's become Charles Bronson in Death Wish. We did want it to be slightly dubious, the fact that he was, they were so keen to go and pick up some hippie types. <laughs> <laughs> Just put the, put, the, put the accelerator down and go bust the mask. It's, it's, it's funny actually looking at this. When you look back at the Shaun of the Dead uh, flip chart, we, we really were six years younger because there was all things like Edgar is gay written on it and all bootylicious and things like that. This seems like serious. Serious, pretty much. Oh, that was interesting. I don't think we ever. Yeah, we tried to have it that the NWA was 13 people, so it was like the 13. I don't think that. I mean, that's both. That probably. Yeah, I think there's probably is 13 people around that table. Mm. Oh, these are things. Yes, is it reasons for punishment? These are some of the reasons of what the NWA would um, kind of punish their sort of people for. So we've got bad Amdram acting, lousy reporting and typers in the newspaper, the gypsy encampment, double parking, do-it-yourself pornographer, supplied flowers to, flowers to a rival town. That, is, um, that did have, you know, the end up why, why they killed Leslie. Somebody's nice. Xmas lights up too early, making it look like a bordello. Oh, yeah. I like that one. 
Carnage. Oh, yeah, there we go. Carnage. As well as all the people that die in the film, you, you hear of other people that have died that the cops kind of have, um, you know, when they're saying about, oh, people have accidents every day, there was a whole thing in the script of um, Ben... Uh, ben Fletcher fell on his pitchfork the other week. That's still in there. But there's a thing about Gary Butcher drown, drowning in a drowning in septic, septic tank. tank and Somebody got Ron, Ron Spencer getting his cravat caught in the mulcher. <laughs> but we wanted the idea that there was... That this was just the tip of the iceberg. This happened all the time, and people were constantly sort of dying in horrific farming accidents. And just assume that nothing was awry. Local, Local crime. crime. Sheep rustling. Sheep rustling. That's a good Your one. Bestiality. Common but rarely prosecuted. Undisciplined beekeeping. That's a good one. Um, JCB accident. Farmer kills wife. That happened for real, didn't it? Yeah. Wasn't that from the papers? I think so. Oh, here's, this is the this is the comparison between Angel's theory and what the truth is. Yeah. Um, so you, yeah, so you got here the kind of thing about the council town planner, and then the being terrible actor and annoying wife, which is, then became kind of Martin Blair and Eve Draper, getting ages wrong. I think that was a bugbear that like I seem to remember that my mum had once had a the wrong age put in the paper, maybe only by about two years, but I think sort of it really bugged her. She brought it up this weekend. Did she? Yeah, she said to me at the at the premiere. <laughs> ah, there you oh, go. Yeah, Look at that, that. Nicholas Angel. And of course, because it's Simon, I draw my traditional peg widow's peak. <laughs> what I call the peg peak. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the character breakdown for Nicholas Angel. This, all this stuff kind of turns up in the opening montage. His, his bilingual, you know, when he's speaking to the, to the Mandarin couple and uh, the fencing and the, uh, the riot training, the, the MPA, uh, the MPAA record. All this, all this was, is the judo, all yeah, represented. Yeah. Even all. <laughs> Look at that. Uncle was a he's, fr you're, he's frowning even in cartoon This is form. the expression I, Edgar made me do. I think you'll see <laughs> the that. Whole film. The whole film for an hour I do that. Oh, that's interesting. There's like a Spider-Man thing. Uncle story failed to stop burglar who eventually uh -huh. killed uncle. That is, that is the Spider-Man Spider story. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, forget that. Doesn't own TV. That was like a little detail that we did. Buddhist. Like, Buddhist. <laughs> oh, yeah, we had a whole thing where we thought he should be a Buddhist, um, which we didn't end up putting in because we didn't want to like try and cover that in such a kind of brief form. Yeah. But I think we spoke to Kevin Eldon, didn't we? Because he That's is a right. Buddhist. Yeah, Kevin's, Kevin's Buddhist. Yeah. yeah, so he got some kind of like a Buddhist insight, which we then never used. That's <laughs> a nice one down there, Spectacularly Anal, which will <laughs> be the think... title of our next film. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so this is uh, this whole very dense page. I think it's all pretty much um, pretty much talking about the first scene with like, sort of um, Nicholas Angel and his three superiors. And there's a lot of things that we had in here, which, um, things that, you know, you can't just disappear, people. You know, the, they say the famous thing, you know, Robert McKee and Sid Field always go on about, like, the Chinatown script saying that you have to um, set up the main premise of the film in the opening scene. And in Chinatown, they have that famous line at the start, uh, where they say, you, uh, you know, you've got to be rich to get away with murder. And, of course, that becomes the theme of the film. And in this, one of the themes is, is Angel saying, you can't just make people disappear. So that was our idea of like setting up the whole of the kind of the NWA story for later on by mentioning it in the first, um, you know, first uh, scene. Oh uh, yeah, so this is the this is the montage going into kind of that Sanford, the journey. Heading down. Oh uh, yeah, that was a joke that we we had this in there, but we cut it out because it was just too kind of like too much time spent on it. But uh, on the train we had somebody reading Jack's Return Home, in Get Carter. You see Michael Caine reading um, Farewell My Lovely in the first scene. And so our idea for a little in-joke was to get the, the novel on which Get Carter is based, which is called Jack's Return Home, and have somebody reading it on the train. <laughs> the White, the White Hearts, Hearts, which oh, became yeah. the swan. Which became the swan. So we got Mrs. Cooper, the, f uh, the function room. Oh, what happened here? Oh, this is... that, that shows how little is in his hotel room. Yeah. You know? <laughs> they couldn't even fill a page for the hotel room. There's another little thing that the, you might notice on a, on a second or third watch is that there's a lot of owls in the film because the neighbourhood watch symbol is an owl and there were there were lots of little there were pictures weren't there? Yeah, so there? owls in lots of owls in the hotel and owls in the Amdram bar and just the sense of there being eyes everywhere. First night in the Rose and Crown, there's a hoodie having a drink there. We <laughs> they ended up outside. It's funny. It's it's strange to look back at this point and and see just how you know how much it was in place before we even started writing the script, which we did in this in this very building. This is the, the first night at the front desk, you know, like um, car set up, so they're going to arrest the whole town, are you? Which is obviously the, the reference to uh, 
Angel eventually does kind of arrest the whole town, or at least the, 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 the sort of luminaries of the town. Um, and hit all the stuff from the first day. Yeah, we really wanted to set up the idea that all of the kind of the villages you see very frequently, so it has that slight kind of, um, you know, almost like a sort of a, a Swiss clock kind of feel to it. You know, like yeah. the sort of like, you know, kind of Trumpton or Campbell Green of everybody comes out at the same time. And the idea that the, on the first jog in the morning when Nicholas runs around Sanford, you know, you see the same people. So it kind of looks like in those old TV shows like The Avengers where you'd have the same kind of like extras. You know, you'd only have, you know, I like the idea that, you know, all the people that he meets on the street are all significant. Stuart Wilson, Timothy Dalton, Mr. Yeah. Treacher, Lorraine. He doesn't meet a single person in the film that doesn't come back later. It's almost like they're the only ones on the street. I just must uh, draw attention to one of our, the first jokes that had Edgar and I crying, which never got into the film, was a line from Simon Skinner when Angel said, how did you know I'm a policeman? And uh, Skinner <laughs> says, your shorts are tight, I can see your helmet. Toodaloo! <laughs> which we were, which we were going to put in, but because Simon was a sergeant, he ended up not wearing a helmet, so it didn't make a lot of sense. See, it wasn't because it was a crass joke, it was, it was, we were a stickler for detail. Oh, um, yeah! Mike TV, that's right. One of, there was an idea for a character who was a, a, yeah, an officer called Mike, who they called Mike TV, oh, because he'd, cool. he'd once been on Points West doing like a little, uh, you know, piece to camera about an incident. And so he'd been on Points West, the local kind of uh, news for like all of five minutes and had become the resident superstar. And, and they called him, hey, Mike TV? And also he'd repeat his, uh, he'd repeat his quote, wouldn't he? That was That's the right. idea. Uh, the pub lunch. Jumping in his grave. And the moustache joke. Moustache joke. Oh, the tea stops. Ah, this is a, a Nic the Nicholas conspiracy. That's his, when we wrote out what he thinks is going on, which is obviously wrong, on the, learning the route of the profiles, that's black, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of arrows. Oh, so this is some kind of crazy flowchart of all the different kind of, uh, that's like a sort of bizarre family tree of all the different, um, you know, things to do with the conspiracy. We do arrows very well. Oh, there's a bit of film. Midsection, <laughs> Amdram murder. Mid mix section scenes. It's fun smackdown. It's interesting. There's things that didn't make it, like in the finished thing. Like we had a thing with rugby boys. Oh, it was yeah. going to be like a team of rugby boys that were bad. Yeah. We got kind of like the swan. What was the the wasp in hostage situation? What was that? That rings a bell. Wasp in a hostage situation. Or oh, wasn't it that Angel was allergic to wasps or something? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an odd little detail that we we lost. Oh yeah, the NWA taken down. So we've got all of the things here of like the different kind of characters, some of which names changed and Stephen how they... Stockwell turned into Simon Skinner. Yeah, absolutely. But even here, things like sort of Terence Weaver, which eventually became like Tom Weaver, Tom explodes Weaver. in the landmine is there. Yeah, impaled on the Vodal village. The hanging baskets, the ramming of the car, the overpowering by kids, a lot of the things very similar. Ah, Nicholas. Ah, Nicholas and Victoria. That went. <laughs> Gone, 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 gone. Irrelevant. Never happened. <laughs> Shootout in Sanford, the Porters, fight in the bar, Annette Roper, first floor window, all this was... Uh, Michael Messer, who was that? That's somebody that... He was the cycling proficiency That's guy. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, didn't yeah. make it the thing. So, oh, still to do, I like this. It's our to-do list. Uh, and it, it's amazing to, to note that this is probably more and more stuff. The, uh, the second of two flip charts, because I remember the first one had loads of stuff on. And here, a lots of index cards with loads of stuff on. If you if you go through this, you can kind of see the entire the film. entire film in flip chart form. This is now in in the twenty first century is now how they're going to release some films on the internet. It's just <laughs> like that, so you can actually sort of just download index cards and then people don't actually have to make the thing. So you see, by the time we actually got here to Wells to write the film, we had all of this ready to go. So when we say we wrote it here, it's true in terms of the the first version of the screenplay, but. This is what we kind of uh, kind of had as our, as our arsenal of ideas. <laughs>